Welcome to Watch, Review, Repeats. This is the podcast where two best friends discuss the latest in film and television and then do it all over again the following episode. My name is Colton Brown, and joining me is war boy Andrew Meadows. Oi! <laughs> Wait, that's not right. <laughs> uh, I'm here. We have, uh, uh, at long last, we have, uh, we've made it to the wastelands talk about yeah. are uh, you ready to ride shiny and chrome into valhalla <laughs> yes witness well witness Shh. us witness me <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, we, we got a little bonus episode uh here we we uh you know we said as much i think at the end of kingdom of the planet of the apes which would have been our last episode that we recorded and put out uh that we we wanted to do a, f- a bonus episode on mad max fury road weren't sure that we were going to have time to do it you know because it was time for furiosa already and um you know it stewed on it a little bit thought about it and i think i just decided um you know mad max is a fury road that deserves an episode to itself you know we could have we could have packaged it with furiosa but then we would have been there for four hours talking about you know news talking about uh fury road for an hour and then talking about furiosa for another hour and then catching up on all the stuff that we've been up to for weeks now which is you know some vacations and stuff for andrew and it just you know I just, I just think that it's good to have a little, little, little space, a little bubble for Mad Max for Fury itself. Road to exist in isolation for now, you know. So, uh, so that's why we're here. We're doing this as a bonus episode, bonus episode thirty-five. In fact, um, we hoped to record this uh, about a week ago, a little over a week ago, before Andrew took a little vacation, um, but uh, couldn't make it happen. Couldn't no. quite fit it into the timeline. He had, a, he had a busy, busy weekend uh, and stuff. But those are all things that you might hear about on our Furiosa episode because we're going to be getting into that shortly uh, on the next episode. So stay tuned. A um, little sizzle for the next episode. Usually it's sizzle for later in the episode, but I'm sizzling stuff for the next episode, which is which is a uh, which is a little different for us. But uh, um, but yeah. So you know, it's it's a, it, this is a brief timed exclusive for for our supporters on Patreon. But I'm not really going to be doing a big you know, social media push for it because it'll be a pretty quick window from uh, Patreon release to regular release so that we can kind of keep on track with with our other episodes and stuff. But either way, if you are supporting us on Patreon at patreon.com slash watch your repeat, thank you very much for your support. Uh, if you're not, if you want to become a patron, get early access to all episodes like this, bonus episodes, regular episodes, whatever. Um, patreon.com slash watch your repeat two bucks a month and uh you'll get probably a few things kicking your way every time so uh so yeah uh we encourage that uh we appreciate that uh and uh you know you'll be listening to find content like this where we talk about mad max fury road and i would argue i mean i think we 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 talked for a long time about doing the idea of fury road as a bonus episode going back to last year when we did our whole epics you know stuff talking about gladiator and Troy and Lord of the Rings and Lawrence of Arabia and we're like you know what Fury Road's a fucking epic you know like I think that it's not traditionally labeled as an epic but I think you but can how make is a it not you can make an incredible epic. argument I mean, just so I, I think that it I think it qualifies uh, we're going to qualify it ourselves and uh, call it an epic so uh, so we're back into the epics territory briefly I think we will probably again step away from epics as we move forward with some other bonus episodes hopefully uh, soon but uh, but Fury Road is an epic and it is an epic like I said that is worth talking about um, by itself for now we have seen Furiosa I will say that we are going to be talking about that as our next episode um, but we're going to try to keep things relatively compartmentalized so that we can kind of you know give Fury Road the space that it really deserves so uh so we are going to be doing full spoilers for Mad Max Fury Road. It's a fucking 2015 movie. It's, you know, damn near a decade old at oh this point. Oh my gosh. Kind of nuts when you think about it that way. Because I think probably you and I have maybe some memories of seeing it, which we can get into later. Um, but uh, but yeah, full spoilers for everything. And um, uh, I, I asked you before we started recording, hey, do you have a fun fact on Mad Max Fury Road? And uh, I didn't get a concrete yes. So what I've decided I think that we can do in lieu of a fun fact for Mad Max Fury Road is kind of do something similar to what we did with the Lord of the Rings trilogy, where we kind of, you know, checked in each episode on like, all right, this is a big undertaking. This is a big epic undertaking. How the hell did they do this thing? You yeah. know, and so we checked in on like the, the different aspects of the production, pre-production, production, post-production. I think we can do something similar here. Because number one question that I had after I rewatched Mad Max Fury Road, you know, number one in preparation for Furiosa, uh, number two in preparation for doing a bonus episode, is... 
how the fuck did Mad Max Fury Road get made? Oh. That's the question that I had. That that you know that I, as I was watching it, even you know, there's no volume coming away here. from it. Like, like this is insane. Yeah. Like the the everything about this movie is absolutely unhinged and just like you know like what 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 vision led this movie to being made you know like like as it's 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 a perplexing um awe-inspiring sort of movie where it is just i i I couldn't even fathom it like obviously i don't make movies you know i'm not well versed in like action choreography and vehicle stunts and all that stuff but again just the level of everything that had to get into this movie to make it into a really pretty tight two-hour package um it's insane. I mean, just the level of detail and everything that went into it had to have been just just insane. So I thought, let's answer that question. How the fuck did Mad Max Fury Road get made? Um, so I'm sourcing things uh, mostly from Wikipedia at this point. I will try to avoid just reading excerpts from it entirely. <laughs> um, I will also say, and I have this on my uh, library hold list, so I haven't had a chance to pick it up yet or read it. But uh, 2022, there was a book by uh, Kyle Buchanan called Blood, Sweat, and Chrome, The Wild and True Story of Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> what a title. Which, uh, which sounds pretty awesome. And, uh, you know, it's like a full you know, telling of basically how the hell that movie got made. So if you really want to definitively answer that question, that book is probably the place to do it. Um, And I imagine some of the Wikipedia stuff is is probably sourced from that if I had to guess. But, you know, it's a book they did interviews with cast and crew, Charlie Starin, Tom Hardy, George Miller, etc. You know, so I'm excited to read that. Um, Hopefully, hopefully I don't have to wait too, too long in terms of being able to get my hands on it. But uh but uh, yeah, because um, I'm in, I'm on Mad Max brain right now, you know. Between this and obviously Furiosa, yeah. pure Mad Max brain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I so uh, so yeah. We'll talk so, about yeah, it. We'll ahead, talk about ahead. it in the next episode. It applies to the applies to the uh, 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 Furiosa. So um, mm-hmm. okay, okay, all right. More sizzle, more sizzle. I yes. love it. Uh, so how the fuck did Mad Max Fury Road get made? Great question. Glad you asked. Um, so uh, you know, Mad Max Fury Road is the fourth movie in the Mad Max franchise. Um, you know, we had three Mad Maxes back in the eighties, uh, where I guess starting in 79, seventies into the eighties, yeah. uh, Mad Max, Mad Max two, Mad Max beyond Thunderdome. And then the, the, the franchise lay dormant for, for, for quite a while. Um, but not by, not by design, I guess is kind of the, the start of it. So the first, uh, part of this, uh, you know, story is development hell. Um, mm. this is a movie that was stuck in development hell for a long, long time before it finally got made in the, in the fashion that it did. And so, so all the way back in 1987, just a couple of years after Beyond Thunderdome, George Miller, the director, uh, co-writer, had the idea of making a Mad Max movie that was what he described as almost a continuous chase, which, as we you know see from this movie, he finally realized his vision many decades later. Mm-hmm. Um, but it wasn't until 1998 that he had this idea of, what do we, if we tell this, this story where people aren't fighting over oil or material goods, but for human beings? And so, boom, you get that little element kind yeah. of thrown in there, too. And then he storyboards the whole movie, um, you know, I think a few years later um, and, you know, basically s- scripts this whole thing out in terms of just the visual language of it. Like before there's even really dialogue and stuff, he, he's, ima- you know, he's basically picturing the visuals of what this, this movie is going to look like, you know, and then obviously they kind of go into the full writing process of that. But in terms of, you know, actually trying to make the damn thing trying to film the damn thing um they actually fully entered pre-production in the early 2000s they were set to bring mel gibson back who of course played mad max uh Uh for those three movies i mentioned they were talking about bringing in sigourney weaver to play a character that eventually became furiosa okay and uh and they were they were ready to go and then unfortunately um the global economy got very, very disrupted by 9-11. And so that kind of caused an effect where the Australian dollar um, got fucked up and basically the the budget for what the movie would have been became too high that they couldn't, they couldn't make it anymore. Mm. So they had to kind of stop that. And then I think at that point, George Miller shifted gears. He was working on the happy feet movies and stuff like that. He, he he really, he really switched gears, you know, and and switch gears is a good, it's a good vehicle thing. You know, I just want to point that out in case anyone hadn't picked up on it. Pretty pretty proud of it. So, um, yeah, so he switched gears, worked on happy feet and then, you know, old Mel Gibson is up to getting up to no good himself. Oh yeah. You know, being racist and anti-Semitic and, you know, all these good things that, uh, made him fall out of the public favor, uh, 
to say the least. Uh, and so it kind of got to the point where it's like, all right, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? Are we going to do this without Mel Gibson? Are we going to do this? You know, can we afford to do this really? Yeah. And so he pivoted, and this is something I didn't know until looking into this. He pivoted, and he was going to make Fury Road as a R-rated animated movie um, that was Japanese anime inspired, but but um, you know, oh, doing it wow. with just fully animation, no Mel Gibson involvement at this point. Um, and then, uh, you know, a couple of years, uh, 2009, that's when it was announced. And then within a couple months of that, it seems like even. George Miller, who's like, no, nah, I'm going to make this movie after all. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to film this, make it live action after all. Um, apparently, they had already built several vehicles um, as as they had prepped for various shoots that never actually went forward. So they still had they had like stuff kind of like sitting around waiting to kind of go for this thing. And then it finally really started moving in 2010. They cast Tom Hardy to to take over the role of Mad Max. Charlize Theron okay. was cast in there. Um, Tom Hardy beat out the likes of Army Hammer. Jeremy Renner, Michael Fassbender, Joel Kinnaman, Heath Ledger, Eric Bana, and even, and this is one I did know, Eminem was, uh, no, was, was really? actually in, in contention to play Mad Max, but he, I don't know if he was necessarily like going to do it, but but one of the one of the big hangups was that Eminem didn't want to leave the U.S. like he didn't want to go to Australia and film shit, so oh, wow. um, so that didn't happen. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, um, they 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 kind of finally started moving forward on this, getting everything ready to go, uh, and you know, a lot of that was kind of the the, the pre production process of building the rest of the vehicles that were needed. So, uh, looks like 150 vehicles were constructed for the for the film itself. You know, they were designed by this guy Colin Gibson, the production designer, and like they're they're fucking wild ass designs. You know, they you are. See they it truly the movie, are. Like, just yes. like almost like cars stacked on cars. And Furiosa is a through line of this too, with some absolutely wild vehicle designs too. But we'll get there. Um, but uh, yeah, they made 150 vehicles. The War Rig, which is this you know big vehicle that obviously most of the movie takes place around, was made by combining a Tatra 815 Chevrolet Fleetmaster and fusing a Volkswagen Beetle to the hole and other <laughs> modifications, which is nuts. You know, like I said, it's just like smashing different parts of different cars together. And the fact that they're all working, that's that's impressive to me. I mean, it's the only way it would make sense because of the way this movie was filmed. Yeah. Um, but I think about yeah, I think about like the, the Tim Burton Batmobile. That was a fully functional vehicle that topped out at 30 really? miles an hour. Yeah. Right. It wasn't really. You know, like the Tumblr, I think, was to be, I guess, to draw on some Batmobile But I mean, just like... The, I think the Tumblr just was the, functional. Your war rig... Uh, it's got, it's six wheel drive. So it's got six practical, okay. s- I mean, you got some, you got some more deets for us. Very practical good. six wheel drive. Um, yeah. and it's got two supercharged V8s just churning out. I mean, just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, three wheels it per a engine. Gasoline oh my work, goodness. Is what you're saying. It's ridiculous. So much gasoline. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. And then the semi, they, they put a 1940 Chevrolet sedan on the back of the, the actual cab of the, uh, the semi, okay. your bug is okay. actually on top of the tanker. So it's like a gunner okay. position on the back of the tanker. Okay. It's absurd. It's fucking madness, dude. It's so, it's so I, uh, ridiculous. I'm not, I'm not a car person. You know, like uh, you, you, you would certainly be the more qualified car person of the two of us, given your profession and, and experience with cars. But this is the sort of thing that just blows my mind of like, <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to begin, you know. If, and you built, you, they built it all works, practically, all functional. It's nuts. It's, it's, I know, it's, right? It's, That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like crazy. It's one thing to just, you know, and not cut one. some metal and scrap it together, and you know, but and not one. It's not like okay, we're going to build a ridiculous semi truck, no, right? With a big snow yeah, plow like on the front. We want one thing to work. Yeah, no, it's it, everything. Everything <laughs> works. Everything is a fucking goddamn vehicle. Like, you know, I read that 88 survived to the end of filming. So you've got eight, 88 post-apocalyptic vehicles ready to somewhere go, out there you know, when, yeah. when the real world when 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 shit hits the fan australia is going to be well set for uh for having some good post-apocalyptic vehicles as long as there's enough guzzling again but yeah but uh nuts absolutely nuts again the level of detail that like goes into just the design alone and then the practicality of that beyond that absolutely nuts um so they finally moved on to filming this damn movie mad max fury road In 2012, uh, July 2012, they filmed principally in Namibia. Um, Namibia? And they, they, uh, George Miller brought cinematographer John Seal out of retirement to do it. Um, They shot it with digital cameras. Um, And uh, one of the things that I guess could have been a fun fact that I, that I thought, I think I maybe contemplated at one point, like could have been a fun fact is, 
the way that the, the, the movie is framed because it's so fast paced and frenetic and like kind of is really this continuous chase. Something that George Miller asked John Steele to do is keep the point of interest in each shot in the center of the frame so that you don't have the audience having to look around. Yeah. What am I supposed to pay attention to? Because there's true. so much going on. Yeah. And in a given shot that you can still at least experience it and kind of understand visually what's going on too. And something I don't think that's included in this, this little thing I'm going through is there's also parts of the movie where they, um, Maybe it isn't post. No, it isn't post production. We'll get there. We'll get there. Sorry, uh, jump but, the gun a little bit. Uh, I mean, talking about that cinematography and that that yeah. wanting to shoot it that way. I mean, it 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 really drives home the fact that somebody's driving. It's all. It's almost like you're driving a car. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. I mean, you're yeah. not you're not really paying attention to the peripheral. Yeah, you got this whole field of vision around you, but you you you're you focusing on one at, thing. You're looking straight ahead. Yeah, right. exactly. So uh, yeah, that's I don't a good know. Point. Really, it's a, it translates really well. It's really cool. Um, yeah. Three year, three thousand years along was really cool too. George Miller pulled him out of retirement, I guess, again in twenty two. I didn't know that. I think so. Yeah, um, I don't think he did Furiosa. I think he's like, I'm fucking retired. George. I'm done. I'm going to kill me if I do this again. <laughs> and also, as we'll get into, the filming of this was a huge shit show. So I think that probably the ex- this particular experience is like, I'm not making a movie anything like that ever again. I'm not fucking filming in the desert for six months or whatever. Oof. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Um, yeah. So they filmed July to December of twenty twelve. Um, they, I think they did some pickup shots within the next year or two, but they finished filming. Yeah. By the end of 2012, mostly, um, and filming went over budget. Um, <laughs> shit, shit went crazy. They did pickups. Okay. in September, 2013 is when they did the pickups, which is the, they did a lot of the filming of the Citadel sequences. Okay. Um, and then finally they, they did a little bit more through the rest of 2013 and then fully wrapped. It looks like at the end of 2013 and George Miller said that 90% of the effects in this film were achieved practically. It's fucking so crazy, there are, dude. you know, obviously CG enhancements with, with, you know, certain things, but most of it, like where it could be done practically. And, and again, what helps that is having, you know, 150 fully practical, fully functional vehicles. <laughs> everything was done in camera with stunts, stunt crews and everything. Um, 150 stunt performers um stuff like stuff that like feels like today you'd probably make it cgi such as the doof warriors guitar um <laughs> are, are legit. that guitar Excite shoots truck. fire that fuck yeah <laughs> yeah um you know that's that's fucking legit all of that is completely 100 percent legit done in camera no i think the big 3d shot you know where it explodes out at the camera at you I think that was some CG. Let's put it that way. But, <laughs> right. You know, most of it was not the most hurricane. Not. The hurricane inside the 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 the, the sandstorm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You got some Stuff CG like going that. on there, but probably some CG going on there. Yeah. You know, and like where it is there, it's probably like yeah, that's probably CG. But the reason that most of the movie looks as good as it is is because it's it looks not. and feels very real yeah. because it is. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, so filming, in terms of filming, as I said, it was a little bit of a shit show. Both Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron had no idea what the fuck was going on most of the time. Um, they they were very frustrated with the process. Um, Theron and Hardy hated each other throughout the process of filming. They like they got into screaming matches with each other, did not like each other one bit. Uh, part of that, I think, was that Tom Hardy would always show up late and Charlize thought that was very unprofessional and <laughs> You know, basically thought he was fucking over all the people that were waiting around in the fucking desert. Up. What? Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, it's like, what are you doing? You're just hanging out in your trailer? Like, fuck off, dude. You know, so we're here to get. Uh, and I think, I think work. both of them became very disillusioned with the whole process of it because they couldn't see, like, you know, and I can imagine if it's six months of just shooting vehicles driving around, like, what the fuck is this movie? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, you, like you might see some of the stunts, like the polecats and stuff, where it's like, all right, this seems like that happened make for like a pretty cool you know, action sequence. Two hours on one day. You yeah, know? but but if a lot of it is just like driving around in a fucking desert where it's probably sweltering and you know you're spending time with people who are pissing you off and showing up late to set, like I, I get you know why tensions would run high. Um, but yeah, basically when they screen this film at Cannes. Um, Tom Hardy basically had a press briefing where he like, I guess he had seen it and he's like, I'm so sorry to George Miller. Like, this is, this is a brilliant, you are a brilliant man. I didn't get it. And now I do, <laughs> you know? So, um, thankfully they didn't phone it in with their performances of nothing else. So, uh, so that was helpful. Um, but post-production, our final section here, um, George Miller recruited his wife, Margaret Sixel to edit the film. Okay. Um, cause she was not traditionally, an action film like editor. And so he kind of wanted someone that, 
that would give it a little bit of a different feel. Uh, she had to go through 480 hours of footage to take mm. it down to, uh, you know, it's roughly two hour runtime. <sighs> Took about three months to watch all of the, all the, all the footage that was shot. Um, and uh, there's, a, there's it, yeah, something to what I was going to get it to is that what something the, the cinematographer said, John Seal said that something like 50 or 60 percent of the film is not running at 24 frames a second. And you notice this in, in certain sequences, I think, in the movie where it does feel like George is fucking around with the, the frame rate of the movie. Um, and basically the explanation that he gave is that George Miller said if he couldn't understand what was happening in a shot, he would slow it down until you could. You know, he'd remove oh, frames. Oh, so okay. Kind of, kind of be able to see it a little bit more clearly of like what the action, I guess, itself looks like. And then I think also of it, you know, some of it is, is I think, deliberate in a, in a sort of way where I think especially like the beginning sequence, it's a little choppy feeling as like Mad Max is trying to make an escape, like the pre-credit sequence. Yeah. And I almost think it kind of adds to the chaotic feel of it where it just feels like you're almost missing visual information here and there. So Sure. But, but yeah, around half the movie, the frame rate was altered. And I think, again, places where it's probably more subtle than others. Um, but really interesting. But final product, 2000 visual effects shots. Um, so like I said, definitely still some CGI in here. Uh, altering lighting, time of day, weather effects, terrain replacement, stuff like that. Um, they originally screened this to be a... WB wanted this to be PG-13. George Miller probably did not. But basically they screened two different versions for audiences, a PG-13 version and a rated R version. Okay. And the, the George Miller R-rated version tested much better. And so they decided, all right, it's getting an R rating. So, uh, so yeah, that's what happened. And then, uh, you know, in 2015, they put this damn movie out. Um, score by Junkie XL. We'll probably talk about that, I imagine. Um, you know, they did some comics and stuff around it, you know, and then kind of a, a bigger push. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it was a, a probably about a year and a half um, delay between the, the finishing of filming properly uh into its actual release and um i I can imagine that post-production process of churning through just hours of fucking vehicles driving and shit was probably pretty arduous um but uh but maybe the hard work paid off maybe the hard work paid off. absolutely so uh yeah so you know that's kind of it obviously it it is a movie that was very well received critically um i think made a decent amount of money wasn't a hugely successful movie um or anything like that um but uh but um Certainly got some accolades, but uh, but that's that's kind of where we're going to jump in. I think at this point is talking about you know the ins and outs, talking about our feelings on Mad Max Fury Road, talking about our experiences watching it back in the day uh, through you know more recently. So uh, so you ready to, to 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 jump in on some some yeah, Fury Road? Let's dive stuff, into some Fury into Road, man. All right. So before I kick it over to you and then just open up the floor, um, I will say the actual release date was May 15th, 2015 for Mad Max Fury Road. The final film was written by George Miller, Brendan McCarthy, and Nico Latharis, directed by George Miller, stars alongside the aforementioned uh, Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron, Nicholas Holt, Hugh Keyes Byrne, Rosie Huntington, Whiteley, Riley Keough, Zoe Kravitz, Abby Lee, and Courtney Eaton. And uh, in Fury Road, in a, post, in, a, in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, a woman rebels against a tyrannical ruler in search for her homeland with the aid of a group of female prisoners, a psychotic worshipper, and a drifter named Max. And ah. maybe he's a little mad, you know? Yeah, yeah, be. yeah, absolutely. Unconfirmed. We'll have to talk about it. All right, so so let's let's talk about Fury Road. All right, I want to hear from you about your... Your experiences with Mad Max Fury Road, your thoughts on Mad Max Fury Road, it's uh it's it's all yours. What do you got? What do you got to say? So I'm gonna start with my experiences with Mad Max. Period. All right. Um sure. yeah. can't remember Good the place to start. Can't it, remember yeah. the first time I saw Mad Max. I feel like I was pretty young. Um the, are, are you, we're talking Mad Max. So we're, we're talking we're talking the, Thunderdome. The we're talking gotcha. uh Road okay. Warrior. Uh, and then I think, I think what's Mad Max, Mad Max Road Warrior, and then Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, I think are the three. Right. Um, yep. yep. Yeah. Really liked them. Uh, I think I, like I said, I think I remember watching those on TV when I was, when I was young. Um, so, uh, Mad, fast forward 2015. Okay. Uh, I am now an adult and, um, and we're here for it, you know? And, right. <laughs> Oh, and I remember being pumped about all the news. Tom Hardy, I think, is he's fresh off of. Uh, I think he's fresh off of. Is he fresh off of Bane at this point? 
Yeah, he's been Bane. Bane, Bane would have been 2012. Yeah. Um, Inception, um, I think, probably would have happened already. So, and then he did that movie. You know, yeah, yeah, I've been, yeah, I was, I was excited about Tom Hardy. Um, right. Excited about Charlize Theron. Uh, Nicholas Holt. I don't think I really knew at that point. Yeah, this this might have been early. Like, I feel like he definitely blew up post more after. Yeah, but but yeah, I think you know. Oh, uh, well, I guess he was in, he was in first class before, so we knew who he was. Okay, we at least you know we'd seen him in things before. But I do think he's definitely been, yeah, then, I think, overall more successful since this movie. We get that first trailer. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty it's a pretty great cast overall. Yes, it so, is. But yes, yeah, sorry. for sure. Um, um, but yeah, yeah, you know, we get the we get the trailer and I'm pumped. Um, I can't remember what theater I watched in. I think did we go did we go see this in a in an IMAX in the IMAX? I don't know if we would have seen this. Uh, I don't, yeah, I'm trying to think because 2015. We both would have been uh, dwelling in Florida, I think, at that point, if I, if my, if my memory serves me correctly. I don't, and I don't, I don't remember what theater I saw. I, I, I must have seen this, and I, I feel like if I didn't see this in IMAX back in the day, what the hell was I doing? You know? Yeah, um, I mean, Dolby wasn't really a thing. We must have seen this in IMAX, but I don't know if I saw this. I can't. I don't. I don't seem to recall us seeing it together. So, um, so I think no, we might have seen I don't. It I don't remember but, seeing it with you either. But I, and maybe it's like that. <laughs> I feel like I would remember it in IMAX, though. I feel like it would be memorable. I know, um, right? And yeah. I and I don't again. Then again, we are going back, you know, almost ten years. So, you know, our, our memory is not infallible at the same time. But uh, yeah, yeah, I know. can't, I can't, I can't specifically remember myself either. Of, of like, I, I must have, but I don't have the, I don't have that specific memory of like I, I remember self sitting in this particular theater on this day. Like, I don't have that sort of memory for this movie. I think. I think the experience of the movie itself, like, is the is is the more memorable aspect. Like, I remember seeing it, but I don't remember the specifics of seeing it. If that makes sense. And but I specifically remember a lot of 2015 movies. 2015 was a massive year for movies. Uh, yeah, we had what yeah. Force Awakens. Uh, we had uh, I think that was Revenant uh, with with uh, Leonardo. Um, uh, I think we had a James Bond movie in there somewhere. Um, that sounds right. Yeah, uh, forget which one. One of, one of the Craig ones, but an Avenger movie, Age of Ultron. Yeah, um, loaded year, loaded, loaded yeah, year, definitely. Um, and this stood out so much. Um, yeah, we we weren't doing this podcast back in 2015, but if we were, we would have had an episode on. Oh it, my and We would have talked about it again when we did our year interview. Let's put it that way. Yeah, big year for movies was 2015. Um and and like I said, I remember I remember thinking, you know, like at the end of the year, what's the I, maybe I don't remember, but maybe I'm thinking I remember. Thinking about what movie would what what would be the movie of the year for 2015? <sighs> well, this would be in the conversation. I mean, and it would, would be, be hard five, pressed think, not to be the movie. I mean, it's such the Mad Max Fury Road is a tour de force action film. I mean, it is by every standard. By by, I mean, in it, like you say, this, it's, this, this is it's a poster ep- child for tour de force. You poster know, child by tour de force, exactly. Like you could yeah. put it on the po- Mad Max Fury Road tour de force. It could be like another fucking subtext yeah. of the movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's epic. Such an epic movie, um, through and through. You know what I mean? From the way it was shot, mm-hmm. from the way that uh, just the, like the content of the movie um the visceral action and and just like the and and going beyond action right like post apocalyptic movie can you think of a better post apocalyptic movie i can't think of one like no. What, no there's some weirdness with some like you know fallout kind of mutation shit going on and some weird you know just stylish choices yeah. to take characters in mm-hmm. but like you're in a desert fighting for water. I mean, it just seems the th- water. Yeah. I mean, everything. And I think Furiosa, I mean, and to be fair, in my defense, um, I watched Fury or I, I watched Fury Road probably now a month and a half ago, uh, in preparation. Okay. Cause I, but, I, I was, but, I was, but you know, it's, it's, it's memorable. It sticks in your brain. Yeah, for sure. Worms around um, in your brain. You know, and so it's, it, you know, like I said, it's been a, just a little bit, but, um, the, the, man, 
the score of this movie is ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, it's awesome. It's 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 it drives so much of it that like I think that you know I think there was a, I think there was even a point where um I don't think they actually did it, but there is there's a black and white version of this movie that they put out, the black and chrome version. Black but I think George chrome. Miller talked about how he wanted to do a like a silent movie version of it too, like a black and white oh. silent movie that would just be fully score driven. And I think that would fucking work. Dude. You know? He never like, I don't know out. if I would like it. No, it's just the black and crow, just the black and white version, which you know is the same otherwise. Um, and I haven't, I have the, I have the black and chrome version, but I have never watched it. It's always kind of one of those things. Where I'm just like, that would be really cool, but also the, the 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 original, the way it was intended, you know, is just so fucking good that it's like hard to hard to look at the like, other. If versions. I'm gonna watch this movie, like, do I, you know? And they did the same thing with like Logan, which is like, yeah, Logan Noir. I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but like, I'm probably just gonna watch the regular one, and, <laughs> and, you know, like it just the same. Um, but you know, if I had more time on my hands, maybe. But but um, maybe maybe after I read Blood, Sweat, and Chrome, then I'll go back and do the Blood and Chrome version as just to bookend it. Um, but uh, but yeah, that that silent one though could be really good because the score is so, bum 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 bum. You know, oh, just the, yeah, bah, oh man, bah, bah, you know, and it's, it's like the it, it's kind of around that era where like you know you kind of have the big fucking trailer horns. You know, is like a huge thing. Oh man, but it's like it, but it. it I mean, in, I bet you got a fucking bone rattling, you know, set up in your house. This is the kind of movie where you crank that shit up. Because when we rewatched, like we rewatched it, um, I think we were going to maybe do it on a week night. And we're like, no, no, gotta we're going to piss it. our neighbors off. Like, no, no, we can't do it. That, like, I don't want to watch it at like some subpar volume so that I can be respectful. Of and maybe you got to put no, subtitles put on because it's so low. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put it on a weekend. Fuck them. Fuck them. Hopefully they're out of town. Otherwise, fuck them. You know. So um, I piss Sarah off. Put it on. Fuck you, volume. Sarah, oh, I'm sure. Absolutely. Sarah, Sarah went. That baby liked it. Though. I was drinking wine that night, and I I <laughs> cranked it up. Sarah got pissed off and went to the you know went to uh, she closed up in her bedroom. She, can you turn it down? No, I can't. It's Mad my, Max Fury Road. It my is life impossible. is what fire and blood. <laughs> You know, I'm here. I'm here for. Oh man, I'm here for the fucking cars. Witness I'm here me. for the score. I'm here for mu- crazy chrome. Yo, just face. the sound design too, dude. People jumping <laughs> off of cars with these exploding yep. sticks, like ah, like exploding spears. You know, right. and they all yeah. like arch their back. I don't know if you notice that or not. Like when everybody jumps in this movie, it's not like they're diving or it's not like they're like, you know, just half ass jumping off of shit. They are fully committed. I, bar- I mean, chest out, arms raised, feet arcing back, diving on cars, dude. And they explode yeah. and there's fucking fire. And they got these, they have these, uh, they, they have these like flare guns. But they're not flare guns. Mm-hmm. They fucking explode. They explode red, and, and and I don't remember green being one of them. But one of the flare guns it's exploded probably, green yeah, and somewhere. Furiosa, so it's sticking out to me, you know. But they mm-hmm. got these flare exploding smoke guns that are fucking cool. I think the thing about Fury Road is it's just fucking cool, you know. The score it is, it is cool. Is. It is. The action's cool. The 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 craziness it's all so unhinged um and it's just so completely over the top um it's like everybody fully committed you know like i know there's a lot of you know oh, yeah totally it's just everybody fully committed and and if they didn't they were pushed until they fucking did you know what i mean like that's right. it's, it's like kind of- in spite of all that filming drama it's like none of that shows up on screen like it doesn't feel like it was a you know, movie where people are visibly like, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, like I'm interacting with a tennis ball. And like, obviously it's all very practical. It's not like that, but it does feel like everyone's given it 110%. And obviously I think a lot of that is, you know, the action, the stunts, like the stunt team is, is clearly fucking committed to the cause. But again, and I think that, I think it goes as far as both Tom Hardy and Charlize Theron, who despite their differences still act the shit out of this movie, you know, bringing, bringing forward the emotional side of it too, because you have this side of this movie that is just all of this cool shit. And like pretty much from, I don't know, like even just even like the pre-title sequence, you know, you, you get like the you kind of the opening narration with Max is like, oh, he's a little loopy. He's a little crazy. You get this kind of chase sequence, um, you know, and his, his attempted escape building into this fucking title card. And just from the beginning, it really just kind of hooks you in of just, just how 
fucking nuts this movie is going to be. Like I said, and that's really where you see a lot of the frame, like frame rate choppiness, and it's just everything about it visually is just striking and in in different. Different, I think. Number one from like you know that even the pre pre Fury Road Mad Max stuff, like it's very distinct from from all the Mel Gibson ones. But it's fucking distinct from everything in general, I think, at the same <laughs> yeah, time, too. Totally. It's just like, you walk in in this movie 2015 or watch it for the first time 2024, you've never seen anything like this. Unless you watch Furiosa. Then you've seen something like this. Because Furiosa definitely has shades of something like this. Um, Furiosa is different in its own way, which we'll talk about, obviously, on the next episode. But Fury Road, like, it pretty much, you know, it has a little bit of momentum. But then once the title card hits, it's fucking pedal to the metal for the rest of the movie just one speed go you know the yeah. rest of the movie you know and, and it has like these kind of moments like there's a lot of fade to blacks and like kind of you know pauses briefly but it's like every like little thing that spells it is followed by just like another intense outrageous over the top set piece and it just it's not even that it outdoes itself at every turn it's just that it just keeps it up it just keeps it ratcheted <laughs> it doesn't up to stop to to you know to, to to 10 or you know these ones go up to 11 this movie goes up to 11 and stays at fucking 11 you know um and so it just it keeps you enthralled i think the whole way through because you've got this this cool you know to, to guess to get to that that cool like everything about it is fucking cool you've got you know, like I said, the pole cats, people are fucking swinging around, jumping car to car. You've got just, you know, the actual sound, like the visceral sounds of fucking cars driving around and accelerating around each other and braking and pulling off and, you know, having this sort of vehicular mayhem and combat between them. And then you've got, you know, you've got guns, you've got just, just, you've got everything, you know, and it keeps it interesting since like, all right, you know, now we've got to deal with this enemy crew that's a fucking biker gang, you know, crazy biker gang with... You know, this and they're doing their own crazy shit designs. on their own too. They're like Tuscan Raiders Correct. up there, you know. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, they 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 definitely seem to be kind of Tuscan Raider coded and and how they're how they're you know drawn up and then I don't know. <laughs> then they run into you know these this fucking group of women who are fucking warriors too. You know, and it's just like what the fuck? You know, every turn of this movie <laughs> is just something else that it throws at you. You know, to keep keep it keep it moving and keep it fresh and keep it engaging and it never falters. It really. There's not a point where this movie falls off a cliff, you know, at least in my assessment. There's no. never a point where it's just like, oh, uh, yeah, it peaked early. You know, like that second act set piece was awesome. The ending is like kind of weak. Like it never has that moment. Like it, it, it is. And, and I think I think it's a symptom of it being about two hours is it feels it's it's dense in a good way. Like it, there's just so much built into this movie where it's 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 almost like a like a vehicular version of something like The Raid you know, or, yeah, or totally. John Wick, where it's just relentless. It is fucking relentless. And I think that for me, something like the raid, like after an hour of seeing people getting the, the shit beaten out of them, I'm like, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this anymore. <laughs> this never has that moment. You know what I mean? Like it's just because it kind of throws some new wrinkle in there every so often, it, it keeps it kind of fresh and moving. Um, and there's character moments. So, you know, there, and there, I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. There's I think that's also what separates it is at at the end of the day the cool shit alone could sustain this movie but it's also sustained by the heart and 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 kind of the the themes of this movie because it's like it's a pretty fucking feminist movie overall which is totally. kind of interesting because it's not a it's not a movie that you would outwardly think you know looking at it from a trailer or something like that like this is going to be a feminist kind of coded movie uh written by men directed by men you know but it really kind of is and it's you know about these women who are forced to be breeders, you know, rebelling against this fucking breeders or tyrant. milkers, you know, yeah, or milkers. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're not good enough to be a breeder anymore, then you get, you get, you get moved up to being a milker, you know? And, uh, and I think that's really Christ. interesting. And, and just basically having this lead character who is not really Mad Max, who really is Furiosa. I think Furiosa really is your lead. Um, you know, basically having this kind of, I don't want to say heel turn necessarily, and obviously we learn a lot more about Furiosa in the next movie. But but having this this decision of enough is enough, I'm going to help these women escape. You know, I know a place that we can go to, um, and we're going to spend this whole movie trying to get there. And uh, and I just think that's a really interesting narrative drive for it. You know, and then she gets entangled, obviously, with with this crazy son of a bitch, Mad Max, along the way, and they sort of have this dynamic that that builds between them this this rapport that is. 
I think just kind of born out of respect for, you know, one wastelander to another. Um, and, and, and you're right. Like that, the character of this movie is what, I think it's what brings it to the next level. It's rewatchable because it's just nuts. It's insane to watch. But I think that it has more meaning that it leaves you with because you care about these characters. You care about the, the brides. You care about uh, the wives, I guess. You care about kind of really everyone. And up to, up to it, including uh, fucking Nux, right? You know, who's totally who's who's this fucking half-life war boy who's, who's I don't know, kind of brainwashed, I guess, into serving the Immortan Joe. And then, you know, he kind of, goes through his own little mini arc of sorts too and it just brings him into a place where i i i like nux you know he's it's it's a it's a very this movie is very deft with how it manages to do a lot of character growth and arcs while you like doing that while everything is just kind of done mostly through action like there's moments of quieter dialogue and stuff like that but honestly a lot of the growth happens just on screen in the midst of how these people interact around each other, you know, from, from yeah. Max and Furiosa's first interaction where obviously he's, you know, he's like fucking animalistic with her and shit, you know, and, and kind of, you know, you know, my, Max, my name is Max, you know, shit like that, you know, he saves her life, you know, he fucking gives her the blood transfusion at the end, like shit like that. Yeah. Like, man, this is a good, this is a good ass movie. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just, you're just popping off. It's over a good here. ass um, movie, dude. Uh, it is, it is, uh, for my money, this movie is is one of the best movies. I think um, it's up there. Yeah, period. It's up there Probably not the even just movies, limiting not 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 just constraining yourself to twenty fifteen. I think no. I think you could absolutely make the argument this is maybe the best action movie of all time. You know, and I think it's, that yes, I, mean, I say that not purely just based on the action, obviously principally based on the action, but because it's not just it's not just action. action. It's meaningful right, exactly. action. You know what I mean? So so yeah. Man, what a fucking movie! You talk about the uh, the editing and the coloring too. You know the post production designs and stuff. You mm-hmm. know just the the finesse. I mean, I didn't know. I had no idea that like she had to go through that mu- that many hours worth of footage, but uh, yeah. to make it the movie that you have um, off mm-hmm. of that, and then and then to color everything the way like the one one specific moment's always stuck out to me is uh, aside from the giant the, the giant storm the storm is fucking incredible looking right that's, that's um, definitely like a very different but the color tree when they get then, when they get stuck at the dry in the dry uh, lake um, yeah. oh man that always looks so good um, uh, the, the movie itself just is very aesthetically pleasing it's a very absolutely um, really very well balanced uh, as far as coloring and stuff goes um, it's one of those movies where you can really like if you had a bachelor pad, I mean, you're not going to hang the pictures up in a gallery in a gala. You know what I mean? But okay. if you had yeah. a if you had like a fucking metal bachelor's pad with and 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 cars and shit, maybe in a garage, a really cool garage, you mm-hmm. could take every frame in this movie and 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 put it up in your badass garage. You know what I mean? That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, mm. I can't say enough good things about this movie. Um, I like the way everybody talks. I like the way that it's written. It's written real weird, you know, like people have like the yeah. the Immortan Immortan Joe and and his people, you know, they all have like they they all reference Norse stuff, which is cool. Like the just the whole right. mythology yeah, and the they, whole kind of they've they've you know, like this is obviously a world where society has collapsed, but there are crumbles, there are other crumbs of the old civilization that have survived and become uh, you know, it's like bastardized. Or, it's like yeah, yeah, right. bastardized into <laughs> this this sort of new religion, I guess of of you know this cult of the Immortan Joe. Um, Just like a mix of yeah, of like, and like shit. Like I don't know. You got what fucking? They got the Citadel. You've got Gas Town. You've got uh, the Bullet Farm, Bullet Farm. You know, yeah. Like, it's just, you know, like things are it, the world has been simplified to obviously survival first and foremost. But like your 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 trade, your resources are are fucking guzzling. You know, you need some gas. You know, <laughs> to power these fucking vehicles because that's how everyone gets around the wasteland. Um, and bullets. You know, fucking ammunition. Like that's that's what it boils down to. Is like everything is and water. And even Mad Max, who who obviously is separated from very early on. Like Mad Max's whole thing is driving around in this fucking car, right? You know. Um, and so this is a movie that's like, what is Mad Max without his fucking signature, uh, I guess, car at this point. But um, 
it, it like that's what this world is. That's what the world has kind of been broken down into. And so it's really interesting to see like the culture of this world. And I've seen it's funny because I've been consuming a lot of obviously stuff around this since Furiosa came out. All of this is very Australia centered. So it's like, so is Australia, you know, because it's kind of isolated, you know, is it just Australia that's turned into a huge fucking wasteland everywhere else is okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting thought experiment. Like, and who knew what what who knew Australia there? anyways? What the fuck's wrong with you? You know, <laughs> why? What, what is there? What are you nuking in like the wastelands of Australia? Know. You know, to get all these mutations know. and stuff. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. But, know. you know, that sucks. The world had to gone to shit. If Australia's looking this bad, then the rest of the world's got to be totally <laughs> fucked, you know? Probably. Pro- the answer is yes. Everywhere is probably real bad. Probably, perhaps even worse than, than you know, weird mutated wasteland Australia. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Unless it's just totally isolated and everybody else in the rest of the world right. is like, well, yeah, that's, don't right. fuck that's, around that's with those people. They're fucking nuts, guys. <laughs> the nuke was really meant for somewhere else, but it went off course and just, just <laughs> fucking absolutely blew up Australia. And everyone was just like, we will never speak of this again. <laughs> As long as no one gets out of there, we're good. Get a modern you know, person. Any, plane, like, any planes that get, get get airborne out of Australia, shoot that shit down. We're keeping that shit locked. You know, like another the whole, thing the whole of Australia is quarantined now. It's uh, one thing that I I never thought about it until you you know we start having the conversation. It's like they're so inventive with these cars. Yeah. I'm gonna build a fucking boat. People building boats, going to, you know, there's a lesson, fucking Morton Joe, he's only got, he's only got like this, he's, I'm not getting water from this guy, I'm going to build a boat and go get my own water somewhere else, and they just hop in and make a boat and go somewhere. Maybe they, maybe they don't know what boats are, you know, maybe they've never seen water, like maybe they're so far inland that like, water, what, like, you know, like what's a, like they yeah. can't even, it's been <laughs> long enough they can't even the fathom that deserts. there would just be a body of water that they could, you know, like fucking like use that as as you know, some sort of mode of transportation to get across it like that is so unfathomable for for these people that are stuck in the citadel who are just anytime it fucking he, this dude just it, this dude is wasting water left and right he's a real asshole this guy you know? um it just you know just dump all this water and like like let me just get my little bucket full of this shit off the ground it's like I don't know, like fill some water bottles, bro. You know, like you know. I mean, obviously, he's 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 not there to be a real 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 good bloke for everyone. But uh, <laughs> but um, I don't know. So Who wasteful. paid this guy? So wasteful this, out of Morton this, Joe. And Morton um, Joe. Morton Joe. Oh shit! He's, Morton Morton Joe. He was in the one. original Mad Max. That's right. Yeah, that's another fun fact that we could have used. Uh, Hugh Keysburn, who who unfortunately passed away in 2020. Um, was the original he was toe cutter in the first mad max yeah. he, was, he was the villain in the original mad max and then uh the main villain here in fury road as well i mean obviously quite a bit older but also buried under makeup mask you know prosthetics and stuff too <laughs> so pretty unrecognizable uh so i don't i think there have been fan theories of like well maybe toe cutters you know survived and now he's the morton jones like no i think I think, especially as evidenced by Furiosa, I think George Miller just likes to use some actors, you know, for for multiple roles. I think he's not opposed to that sort of business. Um, so, no, um, he Martin likes to work with he's, he's good, you know. But he's yeah, got he's got a sort of Vader esque presence, you know. Uh, uh, the voice, I think, is very commanding and powerful. Yeah. Do not, my friends, become addicted to the water. <laughs> you know, just just uh, uh, <laughs> even like the, you talk about the trailer too, like. Uh, you know, like there's the moment in the trailer that always stuck in my brain of where is she taking them? You know, this dude is fucking livid. I like the part where um, I don't like this part. I should let me make this clear. <laughs> don't like the part where his wife, this pregnant wife, gets thrown off and dies. Like that's obviously sad. But the part where he's just fucking angry and everyone's shooting in the air and his fucking mask opens up and he's screaming. I'm just, it's, it's good. It's a good little moment. Yeah, um, for sure. That's the part. That's the part I like about that too. Um, yeah. Good villain though. Good, good villain. Good satisfying death. Getting his fucking face ripped off is is, is pretty pretty, oh, yeah. pretty good. Yeah, gnarly, appropriately gnarly, but fitting for uh, a weird cult leader who puts you know the uh, chastity belts on his on his wives and you know and all that shit. So, um, and the, and, the, and we haven't talked about them. The, the wives are are really interesting. Like each each of them has like their own kind of unique personality that I think at, you know just adds a little something you know um and and obviously it really i think a lot of actors who we have probably seen more and stuff like like zoe kravitz particularly is obviously someone who i think we've seen more since fury road as well um but all of them are really good and and just like kind of an interesting like 
have like their own little mini arcs. Like you have the young one who Cheeto, Cheeto the fragile. The fucking names too. The fucking names for everyone. Um, I you know Furiosa, I actually don't know any. And Morton Joe. Let's see here. Well, I'm just I'm just going down the names for every character in this movie. Okay. Mad Max, Max Rakitansky, Imperator, Furiosa, Nux, the Immortan Joe, Slit, Rictus Erectus, um, <laughs> Rictus Erectus. <laughs> <laughs> that's his son. That's his, that's the big fucking dude. The Nathan Jones, the wrestler guy, the people eater, the bullet farmer, the doof warrior. That's the guitar guy. The organic mechanic, uh, the Valkyrie, the keeper of the seeds. Like these fucking names are ridiculous <laughs> corpus colossus um but the wives are uh the splendid ang harrod who is rosie huntington whiteley who's the pregnant one toast the knowing who is zoe kravitz uh capable who's rally keo who forms the bond with nux the dag who's the the blonde one who's kind of weird and shit um and then uh, cheeto the fragile who's the young one who's kind of just like oh if we just go back he'll forgive us and then at the end she kind of she kind of plays on the audience's expectations where she's like, I'm going back. Take me back. It's okay. And then she fucking, she, she kind of sets up, you know, Morton Joe's demise, which is good. You know, she, she, she proves her metal as well. And, and her, commitment yeah. to, you know, breaking free of, uh, obviously this, uh, uh, yeah, real bad situation. I think that she, she is, she is in, you know, basically forced to be a, a wife and breeder. So, um, I don't know, man. I just think the, the, like I said, it's so nuts that this movie is only two hours and there is just so much packed into it from the action to the characters, to, to the heart of it, to the, you know, to the real emotions of it and the, and the genuine connections. Like obviously Furiosa is fiercely protective of these wives and is so committed to taking them to, to, to the green place or to, to, to salvation, you know, and, and, and Max is kind of his own fucking story that gets kind of baked and weaved into it, you know, with them, obviously, but then you throw in a Nux in there, you throw in, I don't know, I mean, just any of them, you know, throw any, the stuff with the stuff with the, uh, the Vuvulini, who are these women, the Valkyrie, the Keeper of the Seeds, like, like little interesting, like, kind of moments of, like, lore that are kind of just, again, baked into this huge over-the-top action movie. It's so impressive that there's so much in there. And there's yeah. something about, like, not to totally jump ahead, but, like, Furiosa is a lot more plot-heavy. And this is very much just like kind of, I don't want to say lip service, but it is kind of just like there's a lot packed in there, but none of it is necessarily explored with, you know, 20 minutes of dialogue to no, explain it. It's organic. It's just, just right. there. It's there for to take you in. Like you see it, you experience it, you kind of get it and you get enough of it that it's, that it's impactful, but then you move on and then there's something else that kind of draws your attention away from that and, you know, draws your attention to that. Um, and it's just, I don't know, to me, it's just. I like the way that they treated Max in general. Like you said, it's like uh, yeah. uh, 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 Furiosa in this movie is is your central, like almost like your central right. point well, of view character, she's, right? Right. She's um, pretty level headed. She's she's doing things from what appear to be altruistic, you know, uh, motivations, and then and then Max is just a, he's a fucking well, he's well, a blood some, bag. He's just he's just kind of a he's just kind of a you know a, a monster sort of thing. It's it's cool that. Um, it's almost as if, Maybe like, like if you had, if you had like a western, you know, and you had like one deputy guy, right, who mm. found himself in this town, and then you get involved with all the people that are in this town and their situation and their, you know, all the things that they're fighting to get, fighting against and blah 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 blah. You know what I mean? And then the sheriff's just there to kind of like do a thing, right? And then, right. and then he, and then, and then at the end of this movie, he like, if I remember right, uh, he he kind of like, he kind of like just disappears, right? Uh, kind of, yeah, pretty much, yeah, they, like, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a point, like he finds himself where, in the city, because, like, because, and then he does his thing, he helps the people of the city, and then he's just fucking out again, right? Yeah, he's he's ready to kind of, he's yes, yeah, exactly. Well, at the at the very, he's saying like at the very end, yeah, at the very end of the movie, like he just dis- like just like disappears, yeah. right? Yeah, like his whole thing is I've done what I needed to do, and and now I'm gonna go back and 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 Mad Max about you know like back into the wasteland I go like this yeah. this is not the life for me I'm not here to to have a good life and 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 the Citadel like that's not who I am you know I'm ha- I'm here happy to do my part glad that you know things worked out but now I, now now I, back onto yeah, Fury I mean, Road I think the closing shot of Max is just back onto the Fury Road back into the wasteland and just you know back, back what to other bit, kind of adventures business, can we get you know? into you know. It's pretty right. cool. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot, yeah. actually. Anyway, this, this is this is just 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 one Mad Max adventure. Which is just one Mad Max saga, you could say, um, <laughs> because maybe there's another saga that we'll talk about. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know if I have much else to say. I mean, I, look, there's probably other things that I could say that I'm forgetting to say right now. talk about every car. You remember how big the tires are on that one? Is it... I don't think... Immort- <laughs> Immortus Joe drives the double Cadillac, right? The one that's got two Cadillacs morphed into yeah. one? Who drives the big... The, the big... Erectus drives the giant monster truck thing, though, right? Uh, who I can't, who drives uh, the big thing with the giant wide tires? And like they they it, he just hits the rocks and like jumps over the rocks. It's like this massive. It's like yeah. a massive buggy with I, these big fucking tires. I don't know how to describe it. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I yeah I, I can't I can't remember exactly who's who's driving what at that. No, I I think I, I feel like I can. I can see the vehicle, but I and I'm not sure exactly. Otherwise, who drives it? Yeah, I just I remember the they make this. They have this monster truck. Uh, according to Car and Driver, it's called the Bigfoot. It's got like two guns on top. It's a pickup truck with these giant tires, and it looks chrome, and and it's just bouncing over all the rocks and shit. You know, people can't go anywhere. And the, we talked about the motorcycles. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the motorcycle stunts. Oh, yeah, you can go on forever talking about this movie. You really could. Which yeah, you. I mean. It's rewatchable too. It's a rewatchable movie. It's not like one of those incredible movies that you watch and you say, "Ah, oh, man, it's just so much." It was awesome. It was, it was a great ride, but I think I'm good. No, I, you, you, very rewatchable this is, movie. This is almost an infinitely rewatchable movie mm-hmm. because it is just pure entertainment through and through. But 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 entertainment plus, like entertainment with depth. You know, not just meaningless action for the sake of action. You know, like, I, I, like I, I, I'm, I don't, this is not the best comparison to make, I guess, but like, there's a lot of Marvel movies that I can rewatch, but the, a lot of them are, are, are a little bit more plot heavy, you know, and it's just like, well, you know, you've seen it five times, it gets, you can't, you got to give it a couple of years before you go back, and then it's a little bit more fresh and interesting. Like, Fury Road, I mean, to be fair, it's not a movie that I've watched every year or every week or anything like that. But I feel like I could, and I feel like I would still <laughs> right. get a lot out of it. Sure, you know, like I'm not saying I'm going to. Like, I, you know, I, I got to watch other things and stuff. We got to cover other things for the podcast. But like, I think I could. I don't think you know, like, yeah. you know, I don't think I don't think I think I don't think Anna would appreciate it. I don't think Sarah would appreciate it if you did it. But, but you know, if you're I out somewhere you and somebody it. says, "Hey, you, uh, you want to go grab you some watch food this? and go okay. wa- and watch Mad Max?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I want to grab food and watch Mad Max. Of course, you right. know. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I was just looking up vehicle design, so I was trying to answer your question. I still don't know. I think it might be Rictus. I think you might be right. Who drives it? Because I'm looking at the Bigfoot now, but I forgot about the fucking um, the the. Uh, I think it's the Bullet Farmer that drives the one that's like got it's the got tank the treads, treads on it. Yeah, uh, yeah. ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous. That was fully functional too. What? Come on, <laughs> Chrysler Absolutely Charger insane. with fucking treads. <laughs> yeah, nuts. <laughs> Oh man, what a movie! What a fucking movie! Mad Max Fury Road is um, characters to the action to the the cinematography to the music to the score, all of it. It is a complete fucking package uh, of a film um, that I think you know. Were this the swan song for the Mad Max franchise, I think I would have been happy. You know, I I think yeah. that George has kind of had. George Miller. I feel like every time I just say George, singular George, there's only there's it. It also conjures George, of George Lucas, and also no. George from Rampage. Um, but uh, but uh, I think that's what you were trying to do there. Yeah, George. I don't George, know if you George. saw my eyes, but I went um, cross eyed when I said George. George. You just <laughs> George. <laughs> but uh, George Miller, to be clear, um, you know, I think he's had visions of like I want to make more. I want to make another Mad Max. I want to make Furiosa, which he did. Good for you. Um, but. Uh, but I, I would have been happy if this was it. You know, I think it leaves it in a place where, you know, Matt, Max fucks off into the wasteland, feels like a great ending. You know, the the wives, minus one, obviously, who did not make it to the end, plus Furiosa have made it back, gone through hell and back to the Citadel to, to basically retake this world where there is green, there is water, there is hope for, for you know, a good functional, not fucking insane cult-led civilization to, to, to thrive in this wasteland. Um you know, it feels it feels very complete. It didn't need more, um, and I guess the reason that they didn't go beyond it is it's more interesting to fill in the gaps before it. Um, you know, if this is the end of Mad Max as a, as a, as a story, I'm happy with it. You know what I mean? I get, I'm content. You know, and and the nice thing too is you know even though you know you said you had the background with the Max Max the Mad Max movies, the Mel Gibson ones is 
I didn't really have a lot of background, I don't think, at the time. I think I've probably seen some, if not all of them. But you don't, it doesn't really matter. You know, the continuity no. is very loose between these movies. Obviously, the recasting itself is kind of something that makes it feel distinct as well. But Fury Road is fucking standalone despite being the fourth movie in a franchise. Like, something like Furiosa is not super standalone. Not as, not as standalone, I would argue. But again, we'll get there. Um, but Fury Road absolutely stands on its own two feet or three feet because it's a mutant you know so um <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you know it's it is a complete package to say that again uh and to say something else again it is a fucking tour de force slap it on the cover slap it on the back of the blu-ray the 4k however you want to yeah. do it it's awesome this is this is this is one movie that if you have if you have if you have made it to this point of the episode where you're you're here you know an hour ish in and you haven't seen this fucking movie, it doesn't even matter that you've been listening to spoilers of it. Like just nothing that we have said can truly capture the awe of watching Fury Road. And when you do watch it, you got you're probably gonna watch it at home because they haven't they didn't they should they should have done a theatrical re release pre Furiosa. I think they should have done that, but they didn't. But you know. Whether you're waiting for oh, that a would have proper cool, theatrical right? re-release, just watching it at home or whatever, crank that shit up. Hopefully, watch it in 4K if you can, you know, and like just, just let yourself be in the moment. Like this is the kind of movie that, like, even if you are inclined to be looking at your phone half the time, I think this phone, this movie is going to make you put your phone down. This is the kind of movie that that has that effect because yeah. there's not really a moment where like. I need a breather. Like there are probably moments where you're like, I need a breather and you get like a second and then you're back into it. And it's not just overwhelming. It is like, I'm engrossed, you know, and I can't look away. I cannot look away. I cannot look away from the center of the frame because my eyes are naturally drawn to it. You know, that sort of thing. So anyway, rambling over, probably sound like I'm drunk, but I swear I've only had coffee today. So, uh, <laughs> uh I, well, actually I've, I, I take it back. I've been, I've been, I've been, uh, You're putting liquor been in your coffee down some guzzling. Uh, you know, I do actually, you know, funnily enough, it is in a Bailey's glass, but there is no Bailey's in yeah, it. I ran out of coffee, <laughs> too. I haven't drank anything today. Uh, mm. Anyway, what do you think? You got some final thoughts uh, you'd like to add for Mad Max Fury Road? Uh, I've got nothing. It's an incredible movie. If you're, I mean, you're listening to a podcast on, on film and television, uh, you owe it to yourself to watch this movie. Uh, yeah, it is uh, right. one of yeah. the one of if the best. You go movies. out of your way to listen to this sort of thing. Yeah, one of the best movies ever made. Yet. Um, hands down. And if you haven't, we're not going to judge you for it. I might, I might judge a little bit, you but you need to fix that. You could fix Maybe. that. You know, fix that, <laughs> fix that, and then write in watch review repeat at gmail dot com. Let us know what you thought. If you have watched Fury Road for the first time in your life in twenty twenty four, I'd you? love to hear about that. I'd love to watch it again for the first time. I know, right? You know, <laughs> God, to to I, I will say this time I watched it, it had been probably a few years since I had seen it, so I remembered a lot of it. But it was nice to be able to kind of experience it that way. Then again, I still make I I still reiterate I could watch it after we finish recording here, and I think get as much enjoyment out of it. But it was nice having that little bit of a gap too. So, all right, I think that's going to do it then for Mad Max Fury. Road, which, uh, like I said, yeah, about an hour ish or so. Which I think, you know, would you rather listen to this as its own thing, or would you rather listen to this after an hour of us talking about news and then having to listen to a, another hour about Furiosa and then another hour about other things? No, 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 no. This Bonus is, this episode. Is why we did it Excellent this idea. Bonus episode. Yeah, that's why we did it. And you know, we would have liked it to be out a little sooner, but uh, it is what it is. Life, life, life happens. You know, life, life, life uh, takes priority um, life, uh, finds over, a way, right? over silly little things like this, silly little podcasts like this. But uh, anyway, we'll call it there. We are going to say thank you all for listening. If you enjoyed what you heard, you can spread the word to your friends, to family, whoever. Uh, and if you want to support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash watch review repeat. Um, obviously repeating some of the things I already said, but um, that'll get you early access to all of our regular and bonus episodes um, like this one. Um, and uh, it's only $2 a month. So uh, some, 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 you know, good value there. I think, at least I think, I think it's fairly priced um, for what you get. Uh, our website's watch review repeat.com. Um, you can go there, get access to all of our episodes, uh, links to all of our social medias that we're on. If you want to get in touch with us that way, instead of emailing us, we are on Twitter at WRR pod. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash watch review repeat. And we are on, uh, Instagram at watch review repeat as well. So yeah, questions, comments, suggestions. Um, you know, we're going to be 
talking Furiosa pretty soon, so obviously you won't have a chance to to uh, you know chime in on it before before we record. But certainly for our following episode, um, if you've got thoughts on Fury Road, on Furiosa, on anything else that you've been up to, anything else you want to shout out, let us know about. Um, we'd be happy to have a listener's corner to talk about those things. So uh, watch review repeat at gmail.com is the way to do that. If you've got something to say, wouldn't when you why don't you, why don't you just send it our way? You know, just do it. Uh, just do it. Intro and outro tracks Mechanolith by uh, Kevin McLeod and Competech.com licensed under the Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 license. And uh, probably goes without saying because we've already said it plenty of times, but we're going to be covering Furiosa as our next regular episode. Um, this was a uh, a brief, sort of unplanned, but sort of planned bonus episode. Um, uh, but uh, but I think we are still intending to do some sort of X-Men business for our next proper bonus episode. I think we still haven't figured out if we're going to do a one movie at a time approach or try to bundle, you know, like two or three together. I don't know. But um, I haven't watched any myself, to be honest. Mm. And, um, I don't think Andrew has either. But I think I think we're both kind of at the point where we probably life can. is probably... Yes, it's settling yeah. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had some fun. You've had maybe you know, a little too much fun, and now it's back to you know dreary old boring normal life. But uh, um, <laughs> but we can spice that up with with maybe some X Men stuff. You know, pre pre Deadpool and Wolverine coming out in uh, in July. So uh, so yeah, that's kind of what we've got in the works on that front. So uh, so look forward to uh, so Furiosa to to X Men to other things. Uh, I think probably multiple X Men things actually. But sure, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. So. Can they capture uh, lightning in a bottle right. twice with Furiosa? I don't know. We'll That's find the question. Out. That's the question. We will we will circle back around to that uh, on the next episode. So uh, so look forward to that. Andrew, you want to take us out? You are awaited. <laughs> Witness me. Witness <laughs> me.